I'm the boss lady. The Kelly Holland Show. Watch out, let's go. Just to get inside. Gospel talking, Bible walking, wanna help you see. Faith is calling and she's walking with the victory. The king is on the side and she never quits. Put you on the show and you reminisce. Creative to the point where she's making hits. Business savvy is a Kelly. Are you kidding this? So much for joining us today for the Kelly Holland Show. We are so glad that you tuned in. And here today with us during this conversational piece, we have my co-host, Miss Donna Story. Donna, please let our viewers know who you are, beautiful, and what it is that you do. <laughs> oh my gosh, thank you so much for having me. Thank you, everybody, for being here. So I got an online boutique. It's called a natural hair story jewelry, waist beads, and more. And I also have a nonprofit that focuses on women's womb wellness. In fact, that's the name, Women's Womb Wellness Inc., um, where we focus on healing women, healing women. So thank you so much for having me today. Let's get spicy, Kelly. Let's get spicy, honey. We have viewers that write into us and we want to fill this bowl and maybe get a new bowl. So please, please, please write in and we're about to have fishbowl conversations. Let's dig in. So our first writer, what did you tell us? This is Courtney Jordan from Baltimore. We're fine. Hey, Baltimore. Hey, Baltimore. Hey, Baltimore. Hey. 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 <laughs> Okay, she says, what is your deepest insecurity in a relationship? Um, to be honest with you, sweetheart, I'm so glad you took it there on the first question. We about to get transparent. Okay, so Miss Courtney, my deepest insecurity is when my man makes it very obvious that he is no longer into me. That's my deepest insecurity. Um, and I, I can just say, speaking from experience, um, when you pull and you pour your love into someone and you give it your all and you're not coming to the relationship with noise and you're just, you're being genuine and then you realize he has eyes for other people. I'm insecure. <laughs> what is this about? <laughs> I can do that. What is she doing that makes you so special? I can do that. We could have just talked about it. Like, what's the problem? So, <laughs> and so um, that's, that's what makes me insecure in a relationship. When my man makes it very obvious that he's no longer into me. Now, if we're in a committed relationship, that's not allowed. Um, if we're just dating and hanging out, it's okay if you don't like me. It's okay if you're not into me. I will live. I never opened my heart. It was guarded to begin with until you earned the opportunity for me to become vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Miss Story, what, what's your story? Oh, goodness. <laughs> Miss, Miss Story with the story. Here we go. Um, I, Kelly, I mean, when you be hitting the nail, it be right on the head. I, Thank I you. feel like, yeah, heck yeah. I mean, when you step outside of your relationship for anything, it breeds insecurity. One of my good duties is a psychologist, psychologist, and she said trust is like a piece of paper. Once it's crumbled up, you can never get it back straight, ever. So, I mean, again, you know, if you step outside, and a lot of times, don't feel bad for going back and going through what you had to go through because, you know, you try to stand the test of time. Mm -hmm. You try to have longevity in your relationship. But that breeds insecurity because normally, as far as being a secure person, I am. But when you step outside, it's just, so that's, for me, that's it. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, cheat on me if you want to. <laughs> and that was a threat. Oh, <laughs> A threat and a promise. Baby. Okay. And I'm standing on it. I love it. Because <laughs> I got a little, mm, thing. Mm. a little bit. As I mature, mm. it, the crazy gets light, a light slider, but it's still there. Play with my heart if you want to. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to feel Because it. it's a privilege. 
First of all, I'm not even going to go low. I'm going, I'm, well, yes, I'm not going to go high. I'm going to go low just because you hurt me. And then, now I got to show you how petty I am. So, so to avoid all that, um, especially when I'm not in my right frame of mind, don't play with me. If you're feeling something different or you felt that we've grown apart, please communicate that. I will adjust. But don't just let me find out on my own. That's not fair. That's not fair to me. And it wouldn't be fair to you. Okay. So <laughs> anything you want to add? And, and can I just say? Yes. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not adjusting. I'm not, I am, I'm not adjusting. I'm <laughs> not adjusting. Because I'm a, that's how, that's how, look. <laughs> no, no, no. I am not adjusting because here's the deal. You have to accept people for who they are. And it took me so long as a little black girl with a deep voice and dark skin mm. and a really small frame early on um, <laughs> to really get, you know, to get really confident in me. It mm. took, it was such a journey to love me, to, to have self-awareness, to care, to accept all my unique, I don't even want to call them flaws. We ain't doing that on here. Mm -hmm. um, you're not going to, you, you're not going to take that from me. So if you are not okay with who I am, gotta go, buddy. And that's okay. Okay. Mm. And that's not even in relationships. Everybody can't take all this personality. And that's all right. You can just watch me on your table, on your cable network. <laughs> but at the end of the day, that part. That part. But at the end of the day, um, as long as we're open and we're honest and you're like, listen, you know, I, I like to come out of this relationship. It's all right. It's okay. Let's just be honest and upfront with one another. So let's dig in. Let's dig in. Let's dig in. We have already spicy. Already, already spicy. spicy. I just love when our viewers just just chime in with with all the goods. And honey, me and Donna, we're going to be as transparent as we want. So, <laughs> and that's usually she said very I could do it. <laughs> It's her show. She said I could do it. I'm here. Listen, to do I invited. I invited. Okay. So here we go. Um, Eric Soto calling from, excuse me, writing in from Chevy Chase. And he wants to know, you know what, Eric? I think you met up with some of my friends from the last show. Because he he's asking us the same question. The wildest place. <laughs> and I'm just saying, like, where y'all coming from with all this business? The wildest place. Listen, you should have turned in to our other shows if you wanted to hear those answers, Eric. We're going to skip you because this is not that day. Okay, so. <laughs> he said, hey, he's single. He, he, said, he said you said you were single. So he trying to figure out what he could do. Listen, ask me something else. <laughs> Don't be piggy baking on these questions. Oh, lady. Send the original, lady. please. Send the original. Mm. Okay, we, we digging back into our fishbowl. We need to mix it up some. Okay, here's a big old question, Let's see how long this is. Um, Andrew Weber from Columbia. When and where do you feel the most of your real self? Um, so I'm a complex person. There's not just one way to take me. I have all this energy and sometimes I have no energy. Sometimes I just want to be chilling with the Netflix, laying on your chest, feeling secure in our relationship. You have a hand on me. I got a leg on you. And you know, we just we just we just we just in, enjoying one of our favorite shows and just banging out a season. Um, that that to me is a safe place. That to me makes me feel secure in my relationship. And it doesn't necessarily always have to be something fun and exciting. Um, I feel like my real self when I can take all the makeup off, when I can just love you, when you you're not looking for um, the glitz and the glam, you know, and we can just be real with one another. What say you, Miss Story? When do you feel the most Ooh. like yourself? <laughs> when I feel the most like myself, like your real self, because some people Ooh. gotta hide all this personality. I'm so out loud, and I'm, <laughs> I'm so out loud. I kind of feel like I'm the most myself when I'm unfiltered on my mm -hmm. soapbox. Mm -hmm. I can't, I, you know, it's this thing where I'm really confident in everything I say and how I feel about myself. And I love to speak in front of an audience, um, which sometimes in a relationship can cause because everybody can't always deal with an entrepreneur 
on artists. Oh, we don't have you know? time for those insecure people. Listen, don't block my shine. Encourage my shine. If you're the only person in that audience clapping, I appreciate you. Do not give me a hard time when I'm finished doing what you know I came here to do, to act all jealous and insecure or like you need to be in the limelight. Please, please go somewhere and work on yourself. Like, we don't have time for that. <laughs> Next. I agree, but I, I, I right, right. <laughs> Slide was swipe left, but <laughs> I am, I, <laughs> I, I'm my most, uh, yeah, I'm my most self when, when, when I'm, when I'm speaking my mind. There we Amen go. That's that. the best way to say it. Amen That's to that. Way. Amen to mm -hmm. that. Y'all, you don't have to be all deep all the time, people. <laughs> When do you feel like yourself? Every day, boo. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, even Jessica when I'm ready. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Jessica Johnson wrote in from Catonsville and she says, who is your celebrity crush? Girl, there's a few. But right now on the top of the mind, all I can think about is that Idris Elba. He's such Ooh. a fine specimen just everything that i want in a man you can be thin you can be thick you can have muscles you can just be nice straight you can you know you know you don't have to be defined but you got to be fine when you put those clothes on honey i want your hair cut the match i want you to smell delicious i want you to have this this gentleman appearance about you that that i just can't get enough of mm, Idris Alpha. holla at me Police. So, <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> celebrity crush, Donna. <laughs> All right. So, I like them tall, baby. I like them tall and chocolate. Mm. So, um, I'm gonna say Kevin Garnett. Mm. Uh, yeah, the White Howard. Uh, but, but older the White Howard. Really? Have you have you seen his shoulders? That's all I'm gonna say. Girl, I see some you... shoulders, but he don't like you. <laughs> we said the crush. I mean, the crush. <laughs> I was given the visual work with me, but yes, <laughs> number one, the young oh Kevin Garnett, the old, the one right now. My goodness gracious! And yeah, I like that body on the one. What the new kids call it? Zesty girl. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because he kind of transformed, and I was like, okay. I think he's his real self, and he's living in his best days, but that is not for me. That's for someone else that doesn't have what I have anatomically. So <laughs> Oh, that's a, whoa, that's like, that's like the dude that shows up on the first date with uh, Sanders. <laughs> Where are you going? Where are you going? It's You're not going nowhere with me. <laughs> I can't stand a man that can't dress. You are embarrassing to me. So, so, so if we need to hit the mall, or if you're even open enough to ask my opinion, I will give it to you. I will, I, I will look it up. Now, I don't like to do this, but you will not embarrass me. So you're going to have to learn to take some initiative to get to those stores and start to be open about your inability to put clothes on, and they match. Okay? <laughs> so, my goodness. <laughs> let me, let me do this so I hurt somebody's feelings. They like the way it's uh oh. Uh oh. We don't like that. <laughs> we don't. Okay. Especially while I'm over here switching up the bag with the church with the purse and, and walking in these heels and pinching my pinky toe. You better come to the oh. table. You better come to the table correct. You better understand the assignment. Oh. And that is not tacky or beachwear or Hawaiian shirts and all of this foolishness. And your collar is not supposed to be up like this all the time. Okay. So <laughs> Girl, said what she said. It's pay. so crazy. I was in the store yesterday and I was like, see, Kelly is a heel wearer. Like, y'all don't understand. I know Kelly. She's an amazing woman. When I tell y'all this woman is she, she a stiletto heel, me, and I said yesterday, I said, oh, I want to go somewhere I can wear heels. And I said, and then immediately say, I want to take them off. So that, that, there we go. That's me and my heel struggle. I okay. I've come to the age where the heels will stay on, okay? I'll drive down there in the uh, Uggs or the slides, um, but when it's time to step out that car, those heels stay on me till I get back in that car. I cannot stand a female that comes out her heels and then all of a sudden she's barefoot. You don't take your tacky tail back where you came from. You do not belong in my company. <laughs> Who does that? Right, not barefoot. That's, barefoot. A, that's, that's a whole nother show. That's mm -hmm. a whole nother show. Okay, it's COVID on the floor. Okay, so please stop that. It's COVID on the door. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
I love it. All of them. Oh, oh. <laughs> on all the doors. Yeah, <laughs> and, absolutely. Okay. Uh, <laughs> let, me, let me dig back into fish bowl. What, what, what we got going on right now? Who is this? Big little question. This is Stacy Pitts from Westminster. What is my most precious memory of my husband? I, I guess I'm going to say this every show. He gone, y'all. <laughs> we divorced. <laughs> My most precious memory of him, um, I smiled the other day when I thought about this, though. Um, it was on our wedding, and he was just looking all fine and into himself. And you know, it's a celebration at the reception. He's coming over to come get the garter off my leg. And, and it, it, it just in that moment, you know, he's entertaining the crowd. He's showing his mm -hmm. love for me in front of everybody. He's being playful and romantic and a little sexy at the same time. That was a good memory for me. <laughs> what about you, girl? <laughs> um, I'm going to have to step into the light, Carolyn. And I'm going to have to... <laughs> I'm going to have to say that I'm a two-time divorcee um, and I, 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 don't, I can't, I can't get into that, but thank you so much for handling that question for me, guys. Thank you. Next question. <laughs> next, question. next question. Let's dig into the bowl. <laughs> okay. Peter Hicks from Aberdeen. Which is better, morning or night sex? He's so nasty, Peter. I like it in the morning. Let's wake up, funky breath, get it in, go to work, happy. <laughs> so, okay. Yes. I yes. like it in the talk morning. <laughs> yeah, talk about night. a game changer. Mm -hmm. I'll take it at night, but I like it in the morning. Start my day off right, honey. You give me a new pep in my step when I go into the office, whether that office is in my office in my home or if that office is in a building. Let me sashay in the comfort of those memories from this morning because you know I'm going to hook you up when we get back home tonight. Amen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what you like, Donna? You want it in the what morning? What say you, Miss Story? What say you, Miss Story? <laughs> well, I say I kind of, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, uh, Morning is good. I like night better. I'm, I'm that girl. I like night better because I'm not rushing. And yeah, I, that's why I like it because I got more time at night. Listen, you wake up and give me a little nudge. I'm going to wake up, push back. <laughs> I'm going to go back to sleep. <laughs> there we go. There we go. I love it. I love it. I love it. Thank you for your question. I right, reaching back into the bowl for these fishbowl topics. Of call. Okay, you just jumping out the bowl. Let me read you. Jesus. Come on in. That's okay. the one. David Winters from Salisbury. How do you and your spouse handle disagreements? Do you think you can improve in this area and how? Oh, David, I'm so sorry you're experiencing something or you have experienced this. And I just want to let you know, um, it's through kindness, it's through respect, it's also through um, openness and honesty. Um, we can't handle our disagreements until we discuss what the issue is. So um, to me, you just have to come right out with it. You have to be respectful about it. Um, choose your words, not to be accusatory. And also make sure that um, you know, you're just expressing why you feel that way. You're giving examples and you're also making sure that you want to have a resolve. You don't want to just sit, wait for your turn to talk. You have to internalize and listen to the responses you get. Maybe your issue isn't really an issue once it's all talked out. Maybe it's just a misunderstanding. <laughs> My story. Agreed. Well, I love a little uh, disagreement because it, all, it always lets everybody know what's going on. But what I have learned of being this 42 years on the earth is number one, just like you said before, um, when, when they go high, you go low. There has to be like a, a under underlined some type of understanding between you all to where if someone is really hot, the other person got to be a little colder. You know, yeah. two hot heads, you're not hearing each other. Yeah. Um, amazing thing that I learned um, after my 40s was um, most of the time, if you give something a day or two, it's not even that serious. So a lot of times you should address the issue and put some air in it. Put yeah. some air in it. Just say, hey, listen, I got a few things I need to talk to you about I didn't like. Um, I'm going to calm down think about it and talk to you tomorrow and it allows for you to have a lot more respect mm -hmm. to think about both sides but that is a learned skill <laughs> it happen overnight I'm telling you I'm because when the hawk come out, <laughs> it's a learned skill it's a learned skill 
the yeah, legal thing yeah. baby. Yeah, I, I can definitely say that um, maturity has um, created a much calmer person um, within myself. And I really like the advice you gave, Donna. You know, just kind of express that there's a need, but you want to take some time to let those emotions die down. And once we pull the emotions out of the situation, nine times out of 10, y'all can settle that thing, okay? And if the love is strong and real, you want to settle that thing. So good question. And thank you for writing in. One more, one more thing on that. Emotional maturity is extremely important. Western society don't talk about it, but there is an African adage that says that if you still get upset the way you did in high school, you have not grown. Mm -hmm. You have to figure out a different way to get upset and have conflict resolution. Thank you, Kelly. No problem. And thank you for the African adage. Okay. Digging into the bowl is getting empty. I love it. I love it. All these topics that have come in and we mm-hmm. can continue to read them. Remember, you can always write into us, send us your questions. It can mm-hmm. be about anything, but right now we're having fishbowl conversation regarding these relationships, romantic relationship questions. <laughs> okay. So, um, Beth Smith calling from, well, excuse me. She's not calling anyone. Beth Smith, from Towson has wrote in to us and she says, I love a partner who's much older than I. Mm. She is about to retire and wants me to do it with her. I'm only 29. Okay, she wants some advice. She's not even just being curious. I'm so sorry to hear that you're young, Beth, and that you're being um, put in a position where someone wants you to stop your career, stop what you have going just to be with them um, in their retirement. I think that's incredibly selfish. And I Ooh. think that your partner um, should enjoy their retirement. They've earned it. They've worked up to it. And I hope they feel fulfilled. Um, if they decide to stop working or maybe to take on new hobbies and new ventures, that's all good for them. But the, for them to expect you to just cease your life just because you're their companion um, is not something that I would work with. Um, hopefully your relationship is healthy enough since you say you love this person. Hopefully your relationship is healthy enough where you can um, express your concerns, your need to have your own independence. And if they love you, it won't be an issue. Mm. <laughs> what do you think? I love it. I, I, I love everything you touched on. And I think the one thing that has to be taken in consideration is that when you are dealing with a group that is not your peers. Um, there is that behind the scenes underlying control aspect um, or that immature aspect. You know what I'm saying? If you, if you date younger, you have to be okay with knowing that, you know, that person is a little bit more immature. If you date up, you have to understand that that person is a little wiser, maybe not mature, <laughs> but a little older and may not be considerate of your usefulness. That's the best way to say it. Mm-hmm. Um, don't do it, baby. Don't go, nowhere. Uh, don't go, don't go nowhere. Stay exactly where you are. And if they love you, they will love you where you're at. Okay. And I think that's a great mm-hmm. place for us to put a pin in it. Please join us every time we air. Don't miss a show. Continue to write in. Um, big shout out very, very quickly to uh, my makeup artist, Maddie Henson. Keep beating this face, girl. We love mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and shout out to Life Academy. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep helping these businesses. Keep helping these people. Tap back. Um, reach out to their experience. Reach out to their financial literacy. Reach out to their workforce development and to get their life skills. Shout out to that nonprofit. Donna, anybody you want to throw in real quick? Yeah, I want to shout out the Life Academy as well, because had I not been to the Life Academy, that wonderful place it is, I wouldn't have been able to open my nonprofit, which I want to roll right into, which is Women's Womb Wellness, Healing Women One Womb at a Time, and also my boutique at A Natural Hair Story on all social media platforms. Also, I'm an author. Check out my book. It's on Amazon called Waste Bees in Western Society, and I just appreciate Hey, Kelly, did I tell you? Did I tell you how thankful I was? Girl. Did I, did I say thank you? You don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You don't have to. And thank you all for tuning in. Please continue to do so. Um, this has been the Kelly Holland Show. And never forget to tap back into your unspeakable joy. Have a great day. Hey, everybody. This is your girl, Evangelist Sandra E. Jackson. And the E stands for aesthetic because I am ecstatic to be alive. I am a shift allergist, an author, an anchor woman, a mother of nine children, and a motivator. 
I am here to help you. Head over to my website, www.sandragrumph.com. That is S-A-N-D-R-A-R-U-M-P-H. I have what it takes for you, and I would like to help you. So go to website, www.sandragrumph.com. I can't wait to hear from you. Surrendered it, then it took a minute. Testimony show will live it. If you ask me if we change me, yes, he, yes, he, yes, he, yes. Here come the boss lady, the Kelly Holland Show. Watch out, let's go. Such a 